Another day of training camp practice is in the book for the Steelers, but there's more talk about Kevin Dotson and what's going on with him and how prepared is he at training camp. To break that down with me, we've got Tony Serino, and he's got some crazy conspiracy theories on what might actually be going down with T.J. Watt. We'll break all those things down right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, which is brought to you today by rockauto.com, which has an amazing selection, reliable little prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today and tell them that Locked On sent you. For the Locked On Steelers podcast, let's get into it. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can watch this show on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by searching Locked On Steelers on YouTube. Or you can listen to us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or the app Odyssey. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y Odyssey. Remember, it's five stars with a positive comment on Apple. And you get a special shout-out at the end of the show, just like we will have a person at the end of this show giving a shout-out. Today, joining me, as usual, on Tuesday. We missed him last week. We missed him last week. But it's not just any Tuesday, because it's time for a Tony Tuesday. What's up, Tony? Sir? Ah, back to the show. I am excited to be here. I was uh, I was trapped in Baltimore overnight. Oh, thanks to, that's a uh, nightmare. What are oh, you doing? It was, and I was visiting uh, my wife's parents. But uh, that trip home stuck stuck in Baltimore Airport overnight. Not not a place you want to be stuck, Chris. Not a place you want to be stuck. So, oh my gosh. I mean, so like you, you were just being chased around by Lamar Jackson. I'll and, tell you what, uh, though. What's up? I'll t- and I, I I told Sonny, my co host at AFC North Talk, Baltimore, not a great sports city. Not a great sports city. Great Whoa, sports city. Shots fired. Yeah. I, I, I saw more Steeler fans in that airport than I did Ravens fans. I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to say that. So, wow. You won't say this. That's I'll tell you this. You won't, say, you won't say the same thing in Pittsburgh Airport. You won't be seeing more Lamar Jackson jerseys than you do Juju jerseys. But, whoa. That's where we are in 2021. Oh, hey, man. Hey, hey. That's just – he's just reporting the facts. That's all That's right. we can do. Just, just reporting what I saw. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, we got to get to some serious talk, though, with the Steelers. Now, I briefly mentioned this at the end of yesterday's Locked On Steelers podcast. You can go check that out if you missed it. But the Kevin Dotson situation, it has continued to grow. Yeah. Um, as everyone remembers, Kevin Dotson – uh hasn't hadn't been able to practice through the first two weeks of training camp he had like been wearing the helmet and the jersey and doing like light warm-up things but never fully participated uh whether it was with pads or without pads and uh you know after two weeks and they played their first preseason game we saw him for the first time on sunday at heinz field running practice within seven shots and being with the team but he wasn't with the first team he was with the second team in, in seven shots so then that question was asked of Mike Tomlin why was the second team over Rashad Coward has Rashad Coward kind of taken anything over him and Mike Tomlin's simple response which was very quick and just kind of dismissive was yeah he Kevin Dotson has done nothing to earn first team reps what are we talking about he's a second year guy who hasn't worked so Tony as we know with the Kevin Dotson situation there was the report that came out over the summer that a source said that he was either out of shape or ill prepared or something was displeasing the coaches of the coaches him didn't about like, him. Yeah. The coaches yeah. didn't like something about Dotson in OTAs and minicamp. And then this came out, and so it's like, oh, maybe there's smoke and maybe there's some smoke to that fire. And so there's there's you know, there's there's something there may be something there, but you know that now you know we've been we've seen him again. He ran again with the twos yesterday. I wanted to get your take on this. You know, uh, David Letterman used to have the segment on his show. Is it anything? And back in the summer, Chris, we were. We, <laughs> yes. It was. It, this was nothing, right? This was nothing in the summer. Today, it's definitely not nothing. This is definitely it's not nothing. Some, yes. It's not yes. nothing. It's, you know, look, there are a lot of rookies that are getting big, big time uh, playing time. At, at, you know, of course, Kendra Green is playing with the ones. Najee Harris is playing with the ones. Kevin Dotson, who put in good minutes for this team a year ago, started with three, four games. 
a season ago, is running behind Rashad Coward at left guard right now. Something's happening there. And and the way Mike Tomlin answered that question, kind of the inflection in his voice, you know, to go all body language expert on you here, Chris. Uh, you know, he was very dismissive of that, uh, uh, of Kevin Dotson. You know, what are we talking about here? This is a guy, second year guy who hasn't done anything to earn starting reps. But this is a guy who, who everyone thought coming in, when you look at the way that this offensive line was going to shape up, he was the only guy who was going to return from that 2019 team. I mean, Okorafor is going to go to the left side, but Dotson would have been the one guy at the one position that you had him at last year who would come in and be, okay, if there's an excitement about this team, it's that Dotson looked good last year and you build around that. And here we are. And yes, it's early. We're still in the, the, the beginning of August. But it is, it is a little bothersome to me that Kevin Dotson was supposed to be not necessarily the anchor, but certainly the good young player on this team is currently right now sitting on the, sitting with the twos and not getting starting reps alongside Okorafor, alongside Kendrick Green. It's certainly a big question here. Now, you know, following that up, though, we do, you know, the question like, okay, you know, how real is this? Is this to the point where yeah. he won't ever get first team reps? Is he doomed? Like, you know, is this yeah. is this a thing where Rashad Cowards, the new I mean, Steelers need to go. I don't think it's that deep, though. Like, that's where I'm at with this. I don't know about you, Tony, but, um, you know, what, what, what I look at this, I, I do think that this sense of, you know, Kevin Dotson wasn't a starter last year. He was a backup. Right. He, he, he started right. four games, but when Matt Filer was healthy again, who did they start in the playoff game? But Matt Filer. Um, yeah. And for, for Kevin Dotson, he's never won a training camp battle, you know, like, yeah. like, you know, he's, he has, he hasn't been a guy who has been established at a position. And I think that's where Mike Tomlin's coming from is that, look, he's a second year, fourth round draft pick who started four games for us last year. He's not, he's not TJ Watt. He's not Mika Fitzpatrick. He's not Najee Harris, even who as a rookie is basically guaranteed as a starting spot because of his pedigree. But you know, so I think this was more of Mike Tomlin being like, "Why, why are we trying to make this a big deal?" He's he's with the second team right now. He'll be working it. But um, a, a, as the Steelers released their their a new depth chart that was updated uh, on 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 Monday, he was absolutely still the starting left guard on that depth chart. And I know that doesn't mean all the th- all the all the things because J.C. Yeah. Hassenhauer uh, is still the starting center there in Kilbert Kendrick Green. But to me. It, that it, they are planning to move to make him the starter. He just has to work a little bit for it. Yeah, this isn't, you know, it, it, over in Cincinnati, they're having a very similar situation with a rookie guard there uh, in Jackson Carmen. Jackson Carmen just came out in their, on their depth chart as the third right guard, right? So essentially the fifth mm. guard on their depth chart is their second round pick. Yeah, the kid out of Clemson who they were hoping could come in and not only play some guard, but maybe even some tackle if Riley Reef didn't work out. This is not that. I think, Chris, on opening day, like, don't get me wrong here, the coaching staff is clearly not happy with Kevin Dotson in some way today, right? I think, I think you could see that from the inflection in, in yeah. Tomlin's voice. Kevin Dotson will be the starting left guard on opening day. There's no question in my mind that's <laughs> going to be yes. the case. Um, you know, this is just something that, Dot, look, the hope here is that Dotson works through this, that this is a motivating thing for him, and, and maybe that's what Tomlin is doing, is this is a bit more motivation. Hey, this kid hasn't done anything. You know, let's not put him on a pedestal and say, oh, because he had some good starts, PFF gave him the best pass blocking grade of any guard in football last year. Like, that doesn't mean anything to us. Let this kid go out there and earn it, and then he'll, you know, he'll start against Buffalo. And I, I expect that's where Tomlin's coming from, and that's uh, what Kevin Dotson's going to have to do. But I, I think he'll start opening day. Yeah, I'm right with you there. I think this, 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 because it's training camp, this will all be determined on the field. If Kevin Dotson goes out there and, and does well against the Eagles, does really well against the Lions, and then they pull him out there, like he'll be, all he has to do is show up in camp, training camp, show up in the preseason games. They'll be like, okay, you're the number one guy. And then, you know, start of the season, I'd say eight weeks in, we'll probably forget about this if he's playing really well. And it will be, we'll yeah. all laugh about this whole, this whole saga. But, there's another guy I want to talk to you about that I mentioned earlier that he's not like, and that's TJ Watt. And he also hasn't been practicing, though he hasn't come back either. But for different reasons, we're gonna. I want to get your thoughts on that because you've told me you've had some crazy conspiracy theories going on here. I want to address that after we talk about our friends at BetOnline.ag, which is the best online sports book with football season approaching. You'll want to get in on all the gambling action at BetOnline.ag. Get all the odds on records, stats, awards, and season winners on the NFL 
right at betonline.ag. Pittsburgh fans, the over-under for wins is set at 8.5 for your Pittsburgh Steelers, which means as long as Mike Tomlin Steelers avoid their first losing sin- season in his tenure being head coach, you can win money easily at betonline.ag. You can also still bet on all the Major League Baseball action going on this summer, but before the next pitch or the next snap, go to betonline.ag on your mobile device or laptop and check out all the great sporting news, sign-up bonuses, and content- contest information. And when you do, you can receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit by using the promo code locked on that's l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n locked on all capital letters all one word for betonline.ag your online sportsbook experts Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Tony Serino for a Tony Tuesday. Tony, uh, let's get to talk about T.J. Watt because yeah. he still hasn't practiced, though I, I was there on mon- on Monday, and he was in, in a helmet and jersey and shorts, and he was throwing up. I, I tell you what, this man was chucking a medicine ball. like He was just like throwing it like 20 feet in the air, and I'm like, my God goodness and it was a big one it wasn't like one of those little itty bitty ones he was like just tossing it just just like throwing it around working with a trainer you know trying to do things to make sure that he's like staying fresh and in shape and ready to go whenever they need him but you told me you have some thoughts behind what's actually going on here i simply explain this away as hey he's waiting for a contract negotiations to finish the Mm -hmm. Steelers are okay letting him wait for that but what's your thoughts here yeah, and, and and I'm with you on I'm right there. I, I'm 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 along for the ride. Okay, I, and I said, you know, it's funny. I brought mentioned this on on AFC North Talk like two or three weeks ago, and everyone lost their mind at the thought of this. So I wanted to bring it up here today because obviously, you know, a ton of Steeler fans listen to this. So I want to get your thought. Okay, I think there's a ninety percent chance that TJ Watt's going to sign this deal before the start of the season. Nothing to worry about there. I think there's a like a nine percent chance that they, this the Steelers let this go into the regular season that they're going to have to franchise him next year. And that, you know, this will whole play out, you know, in, in that way. I think there's a 1% chance, Chris, that are we sure, like, the Steelers don't feel like, eh, if we have to franchise them and let them go into next year, it'd be okay. Because, like, this team has so much cap space next year. They're they're letting Terrell Edmonds walk. You know, a, a guy like TJ Watt on a franchise tag, it's kind of a tradable contract, isn't it? No, don't you do that. I, I'm just – I'm not that. saying – I'm not saying, but I'm just saying it's a weird. The Steelers have done some weird things going into next season. They are letting, I mean, they're basically letting uh, the, the, you know half the half the rosters walk. They have 45 guys under contract. They have 72 million dollars available cap space next year. I've brought this up before. Do the Pittsburgh Steelers are are they preparing for? I don't want to use the tank word, but are they preparing to tank next year? And if you're going to tank, or oh going to tank God. to try and get, the, get out of here, no, I'm just listen. I'm just. I said one percent chance. One percent chance. Look, I you think don't there's a put the one percent in that man. The Steelers don't <laughs> tank. What are you well, talking about? Well, maybe. Well, I mean, what? Listen, what? Well, why? Why would they not bring back Terrell Edmonds? The the, the one. I mean, the, I can't get over declining the Edmonds option, letting this kid go into free agency next year. Feels to me like Edmonds is just because Edmonds just had a career year. He's just good enough that you wouldn't want him on a team that's trying to tank. Right? He's not a superstar, but he's also. Not a you know, not a player that you're going to tank with. So he's exactly the kind of player you don't want on a team that's like, all right, we need to bottom out and get a quarterback. But T.J. Watt is in is in a situation that contract's in a situation where, look, the Steelers don't give out the kind of guaranteed money that that guys who make the who, who reset the market, you know, they don't get they don't give them the signing bonuses or the guaranteed money that those contracts usually dictate. And so I understand why this deal is going to take a long time. It's going to take right up until the end of the season if it happens. But the Steelers, I don't know, man. They're in a weird spot right now where they need a quarterback. And if they feel like, hey, we're going to pick 22nd or 23rd and we can use TJ's contract trade up. And again, I'm not saying this is going to happen. It's in a 1% chance. But you could use that contract trade up, maybe get a guy that you really like in the draft. Is it is it so far out of the wrong possibility, Chris? So far? Yes. That's why you said it's in 1%. That's why you said that. Well, I didn't say it's like a .001. It's... You know, one in a hundred shot, one in a hundred. Listen, Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth, you know, just say, I th- again, I think it gets done. I think the Steelers fans should have nothing to worry about. And, you know, Chris, I think you talked about this the other day. Steelers fans should not be upset that this kid's tr- sitting out of camp, right? There's no reason for him to risk his body. There's what is he going to, you know, there's nothing that he needs to do in camp. Like you said, he's on the sideline. He's getting his body in shape. He doesn't need to, you know, refine his pass rush technique. This is the best pass rusher 
in the National Football League last year. So let him, yeah, let let him, uh, you know, rest on the sideline and get, you know, he's got only he's got one injury right now. His wallet's feeling a little light. Okay, once he gets once he gets that fixed, fixed, he'll be out there and he'll look good. Oh man, you 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 sir, you sir are crazy for even thinking of this because, to me. <sighs> To, to me, the only thing about T.J. Watt where I could even entertain this is if, if you know, you go in the next year and say Alex Highsmith is another super duper star. And mm -hmm. then you're you're thinking like, oh, man, he could be I, I don't think there. I think that Alex Highsmith is going to be very, very good. I think yeah. that he's uh, you know, the more that I watch this man in training camp, the more we see him in preseason. I'm like, OK, that guy might be like the, the one two punch of T.J. and Alex might be to the level that Steelers fans were getting excited about T.J. and Bud. Like, I, I think he can be that good in very yeah. in very soon. But I'm not throwing out the possibility of uh, of, of him being great. But I am going to say that would be the only time that I feel like they might be like, okay, we can, we can trade, you know, we can trade TJ because, you know, we're, we have Alex and he's going to be a superstar, but even yeah. so it's like, man, if you could have the two best, like if, if he's to that level, like he's challenging, he's pushing TJ for the best edge rusher. If you could have two of the best edge rushers in the NFL, that would be a all time legendary pair. And yeah. with, with the aging of Cam Hayward, that might be something that they they might be like, you know what? If we just have two bookends that are just amazing and we can, you know, and then therefore we don't have to draft an edge for the next four or five years. Yeah. There you go. And that might well, be the answer there. Yeah. And, and look, I, I want to be clear, like trading TJ Watt would be borderline insanity of this front okay. office. But we okay. all, yeah, there you go. Yes. Because, and, and look, it, it, teams, teams that do this in the past, right? Khalil Mack, you know, getting traded from the Raiders. I mean, that was a, you know, that was a bonehead decision on the Raiders. Uh, you know, so, but I do think, I do think Steeler fans need to understand that next year, the Steelers are going into uncharted territory, right? I mean, we're talking about Ben Roethlisberger retiring in all likelihood and this team going into a situation where they're losing. I mean, they're going to lose a ton, a ton of players, uh, going into next year. Right. I mean, you know, we'll see if the Hayden deal gets done, but Juju's gone. Whoa, uh, whoa, cool. spoilers. Spoilers! Yeah, that was a whole other, that was a right. whole end of the show thing. Hey, like, hey, no, hey, hey, you got to <laughs> rush right into the Joe Hayden talk. Way to go, Tony. But I, I, I look. I, I think the Steelers fans need to understand. Like next year is going to be weird, right? This is this is a team that's going to be flush with cap space and and not a lot of talent on the roster, or they're going to lose a bunch of talent. And so what? You know, where do you go there from there? You know, no quarterback. So what do they do? Do they do they decide? Hey, we're going to go all in and like you talked about a couple weeks back. You know, make a pitch for Aaron Rodgers or something. Or the other option is you bottom out and you and you, you do like the Browns did and you try and load up on top five draft picks. Winning. The lottery is never a retirement plan. That is <laughs> not how you need to operate. You keep winning. You keep building organically. That's what has made the Steelers the Steelers, and that's why the Browns have been the Browns. You know, if, you, if you want the one year of you made it to the divisional round and you had one playoff win to go along with 30 years of just sadness and crying yourself to sleep at night, be my guest. That's, but that's not the way the Steelers work. I, I foresee if 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 it comes to it where they have the bad seasons, they'll swallow those and they'll and they'll be like, all right, let's capitalize this the best we can. But I I just I don't think there's any way they plan to tank. Like you know, and and, and there's always debates like you know the Dolphins. Oh no, the Dolphins weren't planning to tank, but we knew that they wanted that high pick. The Jaguars weren't planning to tank, but we knew they wanted Trevor Lawrence. Um, you know, there's there's situations like that. The Steelers aren't like that. You know, they you know if they like they could have they could have straight up tanked in 2019 when Ben went down. Instead, they went right. and got Mika Fitzpatrick, and 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 here they are. Um, so. I, but it's just, it's, that was it's but that was way. that was when they still knew they had. I, I think next year is to, if Ben retires, I think things get a little interesting with with, with where this team's trajectory is. Given that you know, I think we all know Mason Rudolph's not a starter caliber, and, and Haskins has shown some nice things so far, but still not a starter. <laughs> I'm just gonna say not a starter. <laughs> if they make that move, they're trading multiple draft picks, and they're and, and they're getting aggressive there. If they see their guy there, if not, yeah. I think they go in free agency and figure it out that way. But. Yeah. Since you teased Joe Hayden, I guess we'll do that Still, next. Sprinkled it in there. Bit. Just sprinkled it in. A little, a little foreshadowing. We're supposed, we're supposed to be building this show and having suspense that they don't know what's coming. But here you go, dropping that needle in there. But.
anyways, we'll get to that in just a second. First, I got to tell you guys about rockauto.com because Rock Auto is the place where you save time and money when you go to rockauto.com. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, or even 100% more for just the same parts that you could get at a chain store at a, at a car dealership? For example, if you want to, if you have a, ho- a Honda Odyssey and you need a new fu- fuel pump at the chain store, that's $353. But on rockauto.com, it's $216. That's big savings. Rockauto.com is a family business serving do it yourselfers for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you could need from brake parts to tail lamps to motor oil and even new carpet. Go explore their easy to use website today to find the solution for your uh, for your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. By And right when you go there, write locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We're finishing things up here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Like I said, don't even ruin the surprise. We're going to talk about Joe Hayden. So Dale Lolly broke this news after a one-on-one interview with Joe Hayden on DKPittsburghSports.com. Go check out his work. But um, basically, Joe Hayden is in talks with the Steelers for an extension. Now, a lot of people are talking about, you were just talking about, Tony, how the Steelers are about to lose all their players, and Joe Hayden's one of them. But here comes Joe Hayden be like, yeah. Sign me up. I might be on for a few more years. I want to retire here. Yeah. Yeah. If this happens, this would definitely put uh, this would this would make my uh, 1% chance of TJ Watt, you know, potentially uh, getting franchised and then traded to a 0% chance of that happening Uh, because that would uh, that would indicate this team has no desire to tank in 2022. Joe Hayden would be 33 years old if that you know whatever this extension is if it's a one year extension two year extension whatever it is I mean they're they're talking about getting Hayden into his you know into his mid 30s um, that's dangerous for uh, look that is dangerous for at the cornerback position because this is this, this is one of those positions where athleticism matters so much and once that falls off you know, we've seen guys precipitously fall off the position whoa 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 first of all first of all mm-hmm. let me tell you sir. Yeah, Joe Hayden is the kind of cornerback, and I say this all the time. When you study his tape, he doesn't lean on his speed. He doesn't yeah. require you know, the ultra athleticism. He's athletic. He's he's, yeah. he's 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 in great shape, but he's a guy that's been about technique, positioning, outsmarting opponents. That's why he's been such a good corner for such a long time in the NFL. He's not because he never was the fastest, and this was why I was right all along about Byron Murphy over Greedy Williams. Greedy Williams leaned on <laughs> speed, not a not not a consistent corner. Cornerback Byron Murphy, very consistent cornerback, doing much better for the Cardinals than Greedy Williams is for the Browns. So uh, once again, sir, I'm just trying to be the cornerback guy who's trying to help you out and let you know that you, sir, are off base once again with your cornerback talk. Well, I, and and I think you know going into like I said, going into 2022, if, if this team's going to bring back Joe Hayden at 33, I mean that that this team has this team has its sights set on continuing. To compete, and I think it does then lean on. Okay, well, what are you going to do at the quarterback position? Is Ben is Ben coming back? I mean, we talk about Ben being in his last year. Uh, you're bringing Hayden back because you want to compete, and you are likely not to do that with Dwayne uh, Dwayne Haskins and and Mason Rudolph. So, and there's some dominoes to go here. I mean, if if Hayden gets an extension, if Watt gets an extension, and Hayden gets an extension, I think maybe you think maybe uh, Colbert and Tomlin have had some talks with Ben about. How do you? How would you feel? How would you well, feel about 2022? Art Rooney said the door isn't closed on that possibility. Yeah, that's true. So I'm sure they've had maybe some brief discussions, but they're just like we're gonna we're gonna bridge that when we need to. There's no need to do that right now. Let's just see how the season goes. Let's see how you know how how best Ben likes it. But here, here's my thing about this, Tony. Joe Hayden, longtime better in the NFL, has made his millions. Has 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 been a pro bowler he's been he, he's gotten his accolades he wouldn't want to stick around if he didn't think there was something special still going on with the pittsburgh steelers he wouldn't stick around if there was any sniff of these guys going into tank mode or falling yeah. apart and being this problem in the in the afc north that wouldn't uh that you know they're, they're falling down to the third and fourth ranked uh, team in the division so my thing is this tells to me there's a lot of confidence that they're going to be able to make moves to keep not only TJ Watt, but also Minka Fitzpatrick, maybe even Terrell Edmonds, maybe Joe Hayden, 
And then if Ben stays, Ben stays. If Ben doesn't, they're confident they, they're going to be able to find the guy in either in free agency or in the draft who yeah. can kind of, even if it's just, hey, Jimmy Garoppolo this. You got a great defense. Yeah. You, you, you're going to have one of the best, you're one of the more talented running backs in the NFL. We got to see if he's going to be one of the best. But there's no doubt that he's extremely talented. You're going to have some, some serious receiving threats. Just don't lose us games. When the play's there, make the throw. Yeah. But don't don't try to be aggressive and be the way that Ben Roethlisberger was that made him his his elite self in his career when he was playing by making these crazy throws. That you're when he throws it, you're like, why are you doing it? And then he completes it. You're like, oh, that was amazing. We love you. Um, yeah. So that's where I see the, the 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 path of this franchise going, where it's going to make things easier in their quarterback situation. They're going to continue to build on str- on strong defenses, and they're going to keep working on this ground game with this young offensive line that they that they're starting to put together. Yeah, and if if you know, and I know it's it's still early. I mean, we're so early in in this whole process here, but I think we've seen some some good young players in that secondary as well. You know, guys behind Hayden and Sutton, right? I mean, I, I've made a big deal about James Pierre, and I thought he was solid, if you know, if unspectacular. But then you know, there are some guys under with Trey, Trey Norwood looked good. I thought you know, Mark Gilbert continues to flash. Um, so there's some good young talent in that in that secondary as well. Um, and that's you know, it's certainly. I mean, you know, we talk about Ben Roethlisberger, and, and that is certain. Look, the window is Ben Roethlisberger because you're gonna have a hard time winning a Super Bowl in this league without a, a, a great quarterback. But, you know, as long as that defensive window is open, you're right. I mean, you could certainly Sean McVay your way or Kyle Shanahan your way, and, and Matt Canada seems to be taking some of his uh, offensive stuff from from those guys and, and even Kevin Stefanski now in in Cleveland and what he did with Baker Mayfield a year ago. And so, yeah, I, th- I think you're absolutely right. I mean, th- this offense could morph into more of, of that style of, look, it's not we don't have a great quarterback, but we're going to kind of just, you know, tug him along here with, with a good running game. We'll put him in some easier concepts. And then especially with this defense, if they keep it all together and they continue to play at a high level, uh, you know, you, I guess you, you can certainly argue the, the window can stay open for, for a couple more years uh, after Ben. Certainly a big question. We'll be monitoring that as we go along, as we do with all things here at the Locked On Steelers podcast. Tony, thanks so much for joining us as always on the show. Let people know they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Steeler Country. You can find me on YouTube. I do a show called AFC North Talk. It's a roundtable show all about the AFC North. If you are listening or watching this on Tuesday, uh, tonight we are doing our record predictions for the division. So make sure you check Ooh. that out. You can also find my YouTube channel, to- uh, Steeler, right. Steeler Country with Tony Serena. All right, Tony, you, yeah. so you spoiled my show with the Joe Hayden Talk. Spoil yeah. your show. What's yeah. your prediction? What's your prediction? Give What's me- my record prediction? Yes. It's uh higher than six and eleven and lower than twelve and five. <laughs> that's that that's horrible. That's a horrible <laughs> so, so you just quit and Nelson injured us. You yeah, said so ah, it, it could be five to twelve could, weeks. We don't know. It it could be I they could be seven and what were the seven and ten. I hate, by the way, hate, hate, yeah, seven, hate the seven they're eight. trying to figure out oh, it, it's us, uh, they're seven and ten this year. Uh yeah. no, I have the Steelers going uh I have the Steelers winning uh nine games. Oh, that's that, that Tony the hater. Mm, low, low. The hater. Yeah, low, 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 low. It's a low, 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 low. It's a low, low. low, low. I mean, I mean, I think the AFC North talk—they're getting into your brain, man. I think they're—they're oh, they're, they're making you think less of your team, but man. You got—you got at Steeler Country. Is that really your handle? On that's Twitter it. Now? That, like, listen, well, listen, Tony the hater. Tony the hater's things. always been here. <laughs> oh, 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 man, wipe all those things off that background you got there. Your your steel you. curtain jersey. You don't deserve none of that. Oh, again, I'm just playing, playing out of here. Tony, thanks so much for joining. Yeah, You're always a pleasure and a joy to have on the show. We look forward to having you next week again. Absolutely. I'm Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Listen to the Locked On Steelers podcast on YouTube, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts. Google Podcasts and Odyssey. Remember to rate us five stars a positive comment. You get a shout out just like this person. We have Trinity E.R. who says, great listen. I'm, I apologize also if that's not what that's supposed to say, but, it, it, you know, usernames can be funny. <laughs> usernames are hard. Yep. yep. <laughs> Tr- Trinity E.R. says, great listen. I really enjoy the show. And as it as it is up, updated daily, um, the content is always the freshest. Mr. Carter does a great job of, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Trinity here. Chris, uh, Mr. Carter does a great job of breaking down all aspects of the game from roster management and decisions to in-game strategy as well, etc. He also does a great job tra- translating higher level info into nuggets appreciated by hardcore fans while easily picked up, picked up by the casual listener. That's what I try to do here. Trinity ER. Thank you so much for your five-star review. If you want your shout out, be sure to leave it on the locked on Steelers podcast on Apple. And that gets us a lot of help. Thanks again for listening. Be back in the ears tomorrow with the agency, Dean and Josh, joining me talking more on your Pittsburgh Steelers.